Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm getting ready to go out on a little date night and I figured why not sit down and film the process because I have a lot of new luxury makeup to test out. There's some new favorites, new not so favorites. I will be sharing my thoughts on absolutely everything, but overall, I had a lot of fun creating today's look. Stay tuned until the end of the video because I will also be announcing details on this week's giveaway and there will be two other giveaways announced before the end of the month. So you don't wanna miss out. Be sure to subscribe and let's go ahead and get started. First, I need to prep my skin. I'm going in with a new moisturizer and eye cream. These are both from Fresh. They were sent to me complimentary to review. This is the Fresh Lotus Youth Preserve Moisturizer and the Youth Preserve Eye Cream. I'm going to unbox this. I love the fresh packaging. It's always really gorgeous. They also have a night cream that comes in this bundle. And I'm running low on my current day cream, so I'm gonna test this out, see how it feels. This could be my replacement. Wow, that smells so nice. It smells a lot like the soy cleanser. I love how it's a little bit transparent. It's more of a gel cream. Nice and lightweight, which is what I prefer during the day. It has Multi Action Super Lotus and Starfruit Leaf Extract. Basically, it's chock full of antioxidants. Next, I'm going to try the Fresh Lotus Youth Preserve Eye Cream. I'm pretty happy with my current eye cream. I'm still using the Neocutis. I'm always in the market for a new eye cream. So I will test them all if I have to. The texture feels really nice. Definitely thicker than the face cream to be expected. I'll probably try this during the day and then keep my current eye cream at night until I need to replace it, which it is probably running somewhat low. My skin certainly feels really nice, hydrated, soft, but not incredibly greasy, which I love. And skincare is tough. I mean, you have to try skincare and use it for at least 28 days before you can form a real opinion. I've always had a lot of luck with fresh products. I have a new primer to try as well. This is from Clarins. It's one of their new SOS primers. This was also sent to me complimentary to review. This is the 05 Lavender. It's to visibly brighten sallow skin. Look how thick and pigmented that is. That is truly like purple paint. I am, there is no way that I am going to apply this all over my face. I think that would be a giant mistake. I'm just going to start in the center points of the face and then blend it out. I didn't think I was pumping that much. I honestly thought it would be like most primers, you know, sort of light and transparent, but nope. It's definitely brightening. In the viewfinder, I look like Casper's sister. Okay, I just need to put on foundation. It may be perfect. I pulled out the By Terry CC Cream. I've only used this a couple times, so I wanna give it another go. If this doesn't give me enough coverage, I'm going to squeeze out a little bit of this Charlotte Tilbury Magic Foundation. Paired with this primer, I'm not sure it'll give me enough coverage, but let's see. And I am getting ready for a a movie date night, woo. So I wanna make sure my makeup doesn't look crazy. It actually has to look presentable when we're finished. I think it, uh, maybe I just need a, a little bit of bronzer. I actually really like the coverage, but I just look too pale. So I am gonna go in with a little bit of this magic foundation from Charlotte Tilbury. Just a small amount. This is shade 6.75 medium. The color is much better. I'm so excited, just in the nick of time. I thought it wouldn't arrive, but it did. My Dior package. So I ordered the Forever Skin Correct Concealer in the shade 00, zero, which wasn't available on the Sephora website when I ordered this originally. My problem with the 0N was that it wasn't quite light enough. I felt like I maybe had to overcompensate and add a little bit more, and then it creased. So I'm hoping that this will solve all of my problems. I'm gonna go in with the smallest amount. 
Oh wow. It's definitely much lighter and brighter than the Zero. Oh gosh. Yeah, it's definitely brightening. We're going to see Bad Boys 3 tonight. I am so excited. Well, I'm not so excited. I'm excited to go to the movies and eat snacks. The movie I'm really indifferent about, but my husband's really excited. And it's award season now, so I feel like I have to catch up and go and see all of these movies that are up for awards. I saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, we saw Joker, and that's about it. I need to see Marriage Story, Little Women, I heard was really good. What's the other one? The Irishman? Is that up for something? I'm going in with the bronzer that I have been loving and it is the Bare Minerals Bare Pro Glow in the shade Warmth. I love it. And I found that the Bobbi Brown Full Coverage Face Brush is the brush to use. I don't know how we got here, but we made it. The complexion looks normal again. I had my doubts there for a second. I thought this was a total disaster and I was gonna have to quickly wash my face and start all over, but we saved it. So now I'm going in with another new product. I've tried these a couple times and I love them. This is the Color Veil Gel Blusher from Illamasqua and I'm using the shade Frison today, which is a really pretty kind of mauve pink tone. It's very beautiful. And the texture of these is a little bit funny. I have experimented with both brush and fingers. I really like the Sigma Duo Fiber brush, any sort of light Duo Fiber brush, and I just sort of tap in there. Wipe off the excess and then tap on the cheek. And it's worked so far. Of course, if you like to just blend out with your fingers, you can do that. But these are so much fun. They look so natural, really pretty. It just melts into the skin. I love, love, love these gel blushes. I just really love a cream cheek. I'm gonna go ahead and set my under eye using this Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder from Charlotte Tilbury. I picked this up last holiday. I wanna say it was the Sephora sale towards the end of the year and I have not touched it since. So it's just been sitting there and I always see it and I think, oh, I should try that. The one thing that I heard about it is that it oxidizes. So I did pick this up in one fair, the lightest shade available. Looks nice. I know powders make you look matte. That's a given. But there are some loose powders. I guess maybe that's the difference. There are several loose powders that whenever I apply it to the skin, I don't feel like I, I look matte afterwards. I just sort of look set. Like it gives a natural skin finish. Whereas this powder, I feel like I definitely look matte. Like dull, flat, not reflective whatsoever. Not a terrible thing, but I guess I just didn't really expect it. I didn't know what to expect really. When I look closely at my skin, I can see little reflective particles, like little shiny bits. And nothing else I've applied has luminosity, radiance, glow, anything like that. So it must be coming from the powder, which is so strange because it really does look very mattifying. And yet when I look closely, I can see like little specks of sparkle. I have a new Hollywood Beauty Glow Wand from Charlotte Tilbury. Open her up. I absolutely love these cream highlighters. The cream contours are really amazing. I've used this before, but this one's a new one. The first time you wanna be very careful. But I like how you don't need a lot and then you can just sort of pop it where you want it and then blend it out with your fingers. So it's very easy that way.
It looks so much more natural than a powder highlight. It's not accentuating any texture on my cheek. And even in the light, as soon as I turn and it's not directly facing the light, it dims, which is how it should be. And then when you turn into the light, you get that little pop of reflection. And I should probably stop, but I have another product here, so we're just gonna keep layering. This is the Illamasqua Beyond Powder OMG Burst. I haven't really had a chance to play around with this a lot. I already have blush and highlight, and this is kind of a combination of both, but I'm just gonna kind of swirl and use it as a blush topper. I really love the hint of lavender. It just gives it something different. You don't really see highlighters in this color that often. I'm going to create a look using the Quartz Rose Ombre Premier Lac from Chanel and the new Pillow Talk Instant Eye Palette from Charlotte Tilbury, which I've been using a lot lately. I love it. Lots of great new releases so far in 2020. I'm impressed. I've been trying to do what a lot of you guys are trying to do, which is a no buy, low buy just trying to purchase less or at least be more thoughtful about my purchases. I feel really confident. I feel great about everything that I've purchased so far. Probably more so than years past. I feel like I'm either choosing better products or I'm just more excited. Maybe the quality is just better. But so far, everything has been really great this year. I think I've done a pretty good job weeding out the things that I know that I won't use. So I'm just putting this Ombre Premier Lac all over my lid. I found in playing around with these that that's just the best way for me to begin. The first time I used Rising Sun, I believe, in my first impressions video, and I loved it. It was beautiful, perfect. The Quartz Rose, I always want to call it Rose Quartz. It's so Silly, why did they call it Quartz Rose? Nobody's gonna remember that. Everyone's gonna mess it up. I like the Rose Quartz, Quartz Rose as well, but I believe the third one is Vastness, the darker purple shade. I've played around with that off camera, and I, for whatever reason, and maybe it was the technique, but I don't feel like it blended as seamlessly as the lighter shades. I'm gonna go in with the matte shade and the day instant look really pretty. Yeah, I think the spring collection from Chanel, the Ombre Premier Lags, and the Warm Memories palette play really nicely with this Pillow Talk palette. The two palettes, Warm Memories and this, are almost, I don't want to say they're comparable or dupes or one would replace the other necessarily, but, and you guys have pointed it out and I've felt the exact same way, the color story is just in line with each other. They work really nicely together. This is going to give you a lot more range and versatility, but if you were looking for something with this color story but maybe more condensed, the Warm Memories palette could probably work for you. I'm curious what you guys think about the makeup that's been launched so far in 2020. Are you excited? Are you happy to see some of these new releases? Or are you sort of on the fence or disappointed in what's been released so far. I've skipped a lot. I will say I've purchased, not a lot, I've purchased smart, but I there's been a lot that I have skipped out on. And I'm happy to do so. Because unless I'm 100% confident, I'm just not gonna, I'll wait. <laughs> there. If I can't wait and get it later, then I'm not gonna get it. For me, some of the biggest disappointments, I will say, I didn't like the eyeshadow quads that Tom Ford recently came out with. I thought that was an easy pass. The reviews were sort of mediocre, and even the color stories seemed very boring. They all were kind of neutral, not really anything extraordinary. The Shantikai Spring Collection, I'm kind of sad to say that I'm, I don't know. It doesn't really interest me right now. Please let me know if that's something that you guys are really excited about. Maybe I'll take another look. The packaging is cute, but the colors inside, and I th actually, I think the packaging is better than the colors inside. That's what really ugh, just doesn't do it for me. It, the colors look very muted, soft, 
but nothing that really excites me enough to want to purchase. I'm still getting a lot of creasing with that Dior concealer. I'm not gonna jump to any conclusions. I have a lot going on with my face. New concealer, new eye cream, new setting powder. There's a lot happening, a lot going on. I wanna add some depth and color, so I'm gonna go into this last shade in the dream section. Pop that in the outer V. So pretty. I love this palette, it's so good. So now that I've told you a little bit about the makeup that I'm not excited for, let me be positive and tell you what I am excited for. I am very excited. I cannot wait to see the new Tom Ford face and eye palettes. I love the one that I own. I think it is one of the best products that I own. The shades, I'm not sure about. I've seen photos online. There wasn't one in particular that really jumped out as the one that I wanted to definitely purchase. So. I can't wait to see those in person. I think it's part of their spring collection. Uh, let's see what else. Givenchy, I think, is coming out with a new foundation. That should be really cool. Their Tint Couture Everywhere is one of my favorite foundations. I've been getting a lot of questions about the LeBlanc collection from Chanel, whether or not we're gonna get it. I don't think we are. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news because everybody's asking, it looks so beautiful. It's in Canada, but Canada usually gets the collections that Europe gets, which is not always the same as the collections that we get. When I visited the beauty boutique last week, I was asking about what's next, what's coming, and that was not part of it. So, but the woman did tell me that we're getting new Soleil Tan de Chanel colors, the liquid. I was assured that nothing is gonna happen to the Soleil Tan de Chanel cream bronzer. That's permanent, not going anywhere, it's safe. <laughs> Sigh of relief. But that the Soleil Tan de Chanel sun-kissed liquid illuminating drops have been phased out for a while, and I guess those are going to be discontinued and they're bringing out new liquid illuminators, several different shades. And it sounded like there would be maybe more than two, maybe three or four different shades to choose from, but that's gonna be coming with the summer collection. I'm excited to see that. Hopefully, I mean, you know Chanel, so the summer collection could be dropping tomorrow for all we know. It's probably going to be here both sooner than we realize. That's a product that I will be very interested to try. Ooh, there's a new primer coming. <gasps> What's it called? I wanna say it's called La Basse. It's going to come in a black tube that looks like the CC cream, and it's a mattifying primer. I don't know right now. I'm gonna have to do more research. I wanna say it might be replacing the base Lumiere. I'm not sure if that's sticking around. They're sort of redoing the primers. There are also a couple new fragrances coming out. There's a new Paris Edinburgh. It's gonna be one of the Les Eaux fragrances. They have Paris Venise, Deauville, Biarritz, Riviera. That's supposed to be really amazing. And I really love all of those Lazo fragrances. I think they have a beautiful story. They're so easy to love because they're all eau de toilette. They're kind of light and fresh, meant to be eau de cologne type of fragrances. So that should be really nice. With my Dior concealer order, oh my goodness. One of the main reasons I ordered it, I was sort of on the fence. I thought, oh, I should try the double zero and see what happens. And then when I went to the Dior website and I was looking at it, I added to cart and you can choose some samples to add as well. And they had a sample of the Rouge Trafalgo, Trafalgo? Rouge Trafalgo, 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 Trafalgo? Is it Rouge Trafalgo? I'm not sure of this pronunciation. I know there's Trafalgo Square. Trafalgar. Okay. Rouge Trafalgar fragrance. That's part of the Maison Dior fragrance line from Christian Dior. It's basically their Les Exclusives fragrances. They're very difficult to find. In fact, there is nowhere in Miami, I believe, that carries them. I was so excited to try the fragrance sample that I figured, why not? I might as well just try the new concealer as well. I sprayed this on earlier and I love it now. Initially, it smells a lot like red berries. It's very sweet, crisp. Yeah, it's almost tart. 
a little bit floral but definitely tart fruity right off the top. And I almost thought, oh no, this isn't for me. I mean, it's a nice fragrance, but not something that I would like to wear. But as I've been sitting here filming and as it's dried down, it's really beautiful. Oh, of course, and Rose Prick from Tom Ford. That should be coming this year. What products or brands are you guys the most excited for? Is there anything that you've seen that's coming out soon that you cannot wait for that's really exciting. I do feel like most of what's come out has been really great. And then I'm gonna go in with the Tom Ford Eye Defining Pen and the Legendary Lashes from Charlotte Tilbury. I just looked up to cut off the camera and I realized that, oh wait, I haven't been filming any of the last part of this tutorial. So let me go ahead and rewind. The last step was lips, and I went in with the Piv One Longwear Lip Liner 164 from Chanel. I feathered it in with the brush at the end. I love these longwear pencils. They are so smooth, really creamy, and then once they set, they're very difficult to remove. So it truly is a great longwear pencil. And then I went in with the Intense Rosewood, I can't believe I did that, the Intense Rosewood La Rouge Duo Ultra Tenue Longwear Lipstick, which I am convinced is the best longwear lipstick formula available. It's one of my favorite lipsticks just ever. Brides, long days where you don't have time to touch up. I'm going to go see a movie and eat lots of popcorn and raisinets, so I need my lipstick to be budge proof. That completes our look. My makeup is now finished. And overall, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. There are some products that were amazing, definitely hits. A couple things that are not misses, but maybe let's try that again. I'm still somewhat torn on this new Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer. It still creased on me, I'm not overly obsessed in love with it. It's still not a favorite. One of my favorite products is this Color Veil blush. I love these gel blushers from Illamasqua. And then another favorite, the Hollywood Beauty Light one from Charlotte Tilbury. It is just one of the most beautiful, very soft, subtle glow highlighters. It looks so much more natural than a powder highlight. It's beautiful. So I got to play around with some really great products. Now let's talk about the giveaway. I have this giant box of skincare with a value of around $500 to give away to one of my lucky subscribers. So all you have to do to be entered to win is be a subscriber, follow me on Instagram at Erin Nicole TV, and comment below on this video, include your IG handle, that way I know you've entered. The giveaway is open today and will close on Friday the 24th at midnight, and then a winner will be chosen at random on Saturday. All of the details and information you need to know will be down in the description box. Good luck to everybody who enters, and I hope everybody has a great week. So that completes today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, your questions down below. As always, I will be listing all of these products, everything that I use today on my face, down in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.